I'm gonna give you five things that all good golfers do, but we can all do them as well. And number one is all about preparation. Just about to get on the buggy to go and play golf now. But before that, last night, I made sure that when I was coming to play, I knew that I was coming, so I was getting prepared. What I did was made sure that as I go through my bag here, I had enough golf balls to play. The amount of times I see people turn up on the tee and have to go running back towards the pro shop because they haven't got golf balls with them. I made sure that I had the gloves that I needed. I made sure that my range finder was in there and it's also charged up. So tip number one that all good golfers do, and it might be them looking at the course beforehand. If they're playing a new golf course, they might look at the, the website and look at the planner. They might even go for a practice round but what they do, they're always prepared. They don't just rock up and think, oh, where's that seven iron? Oh, I was practicing the other night with it and I've left it at home. They're prepared, they're ready to go. They're not leading anything to chance. They don't want that unexpected hiccup when they get onto the first tee or when they're nine holes into it. Even things like having enough water with you when you're out on the golf course. If you're not drinking enough, that could affect your performance. So the good golfer is always prepared and they are ready to go. Let's move on to tip number two and see what you can do that good golfers do as well. Okay, so tip number two, we've got down to my golf ball here after hitting my drive. I'm 160 yards away from the flag. And what a good golfer will do, they won't stand here guessing yardages or thinking, is that a seven, is it an eight? I don't know how far I hit. Like myself here, I've used Top Tracer app and I've got all my yardages noted down. So at 160 yards, my eight iron carries 163. I can now pull that golf club out of my bag, knowing how far on a good one it should go. So I'm not leaving anything to chance. I'm not walking up to the golf ball thinking, is this actually the right club? Should I be hitting this one? How far does my eight iron go? The good golfer, spends a little bit of time and with most ranges nowadays you would see here in the uk that they've pretty much all got top tracer fitted on and i think you know average costs five pounds and you can get the app for free you can go on there go through your bag put your bag in and get your yardages it takes like five balls with each club so you're probably only going to be hitting however many golf balls that is 60 shots no more than that five seven 70 shots roughly and you'll know every single yardage in your bag good golfers do it we see it on tour all the time they know how far that golf ball is going to go again they're not leaving it down to chance they can stand over this shot now knowing how far this club flies on a good swing and make a confident swing nicely struck that one and there it's pitch pin high, all because I knew how far this golf club was gonna go. So, no, tip number two, know your yardages. Good golfers do it. It doesn't require technical ability. It just requires a little bit of time for you to actually go and plot them out. Let's go and take a look at tip number three. Tip number three. And if you're enjoying this lesson as well, guys, do remember to hit that subscribe button. I want you to get better. If you hit that button, you will do. Every good player, especially when we see the people out on tour when we're watching them on television this is paramount they all have a routine so they don't just walk up to the golf ball and think oh this looks all right i'll just hit this they go through a process they want to gather some information before they hit the shot how far is it is there any hazards in the way? What's the wind doing? Am I uphill, downhill? And then as they've answered those questions, they can make the informed decision. But then if we were to then click a stopwatch on, let's say Tiger Woods, when he's on the first tee or he's on the 18th tee and he's leading about to win another major, that routine would be generally very, very close in seconds to the one on the first tee to the one on the 18th because that allows us to stop getting the negative thoughts in our head because I bet you watching at home now, you've stood over a shot where you felt a bit nervous, you feel like you've stood over it for a little bit longer, the self-talk started, don't duff it, don't thin it, don't do this, as where if we get into this shot now, a nice little pitch for me, probably one that people would fear because the half shots are always a little bit hard. But if I stood, I know where I want to land it, about 10 feet before the flag. I know that requires this swing. I always have two practice swings. I know the technique I want to do. I take my alignment, 
Once I'm in, one look at my landing spot, get comfy. One last look at the landing spot. Pull the trigger. I've just landed that a little bit too far, but you know what? I made a really confident golf swing then because I had a clear mind and I followed my routine. So it's not something again that requires you to have the best golf swing in the world. Tiger does it, whoever the other tall pros are, they all do it. Why don't you do it at home? Try it, it takes a little bit of practice time down at the range and just getting used to it. But if you get a more efficient routine, you'll actually find that you start becoming a better golfer. Let's move on to tip number four. So tip number four, and this feeds a little bit into the routine. A good golfer takes their medicine. They'll understand there's a time to take a risk and there's a time to actually accept that you're in a bad situation, you've hit a poor shot, and you trying to hit the wonder shot is not gonna happen. If we look through here now, I've only got 150 yards to go, but just over the top of this little shed, if I've got this nice gap here from my golf ball, it would require me to actually hit a little bit of a sweeping hook, keeping it below the canopy. A shot I know I could pull off, but maybe about three or four times out of 10. If it goes wrong, there's a big pond in front of me and I'm really gonna compound the problem. This is a par five, the 17th of Warrington. I'm here in two. So I've still got three shots to make my par and it might be that I have to accept that I could take a bogey here. But what I can do is actually play out a little bit more sideways, not take on that really, really Hollywood-like shot, that really daft shot, and I could have a wedge in, and I could knock that close. I've made plenty of birdies, plenty of pars with a wedge in my hand. The amount of time I've tried playing that wonder shot and it's come off, the percentage isn't as high. So a good golfer won't let the situation get the better of them. They won't let their mind start racing, thinking, oh my God, I'm in trouble. What am I gonna do? I've got to hit this shot. I've got to take that on. They'll take a minute. They'll take a step back. They'll assess it. Okay, I'm in trouble. Let's not get ourselves in any more trouble. Let's now take our medicine, play out down this way. And now I can start my shot clock again and I can still make par. I can still hit a great shot next time. So don't compound your mistakes. If you're making mistakes out on the golf course, don't make double the amount of stakes by making poor choices. Take your medicine, get back in play. So the fifth and final tip, what all good golfers do. If we watch the PGA Tour, the player who wins every week is generally in the top 10 of the putting stats. And it comes down to these putts here because a lot of amateurs that I would see don't show it that laser-like focus that we would see from a good player. We know that this is a short putt, but these are the ones that really keep the round going, keep the momentum going and get those scores down. So you would have a, you know, a a higher handicap, a beginner golfer just sort of comes up and hits it. Oh. <sighs> missed that again. I always miss that wrench of putt. Wish I'd hold a few more of those as well. If we see the good golfer, they get down, they study the putt, they have that laser-like focus, like I said a second ago. They're really intent on seeing the line of the golf ball. They might take an extra second or two just to make sure they've really studied what's going on. And from here, as soon as they get in, they are making real confident strokes. They're not steering it towards the hole, hoping that it goes in. They've got the belief. They think they are the best in the world from this distance. So once they're stood over, they've chosen their line, they go through their routine, whatever that may be. And then as they go in, they pull the trigger with loads of confidence and they knock them in more frequently. That one requires a little bit of time of practice and you're actually getting a good putting stroke and I have got a good video for three putting tips on uh, the link up there. But five things that all good golfers do that we can all do. They don't require us having the best golfing um, ability in the world, loads of practice time. It's just a little bit of practice time and just being a little bit more aware of things. If we can do those, we're gonna see our scores start coming down and us enjoying more golf and better golf out on the golf course. Guys, hope you've enjoyed this lesson this week. If you have, do hit that subscribe button for me down below. I want you to get better and you're gonna do that by joining me for your free lessons every week. Thanks for watching. See you on the golf course.